This is Alternative Soundcheck. My name is Casey McCabe, and today we're traveling all the way around the world to Norway for Girl in Red. Hello. Hello. Good, after, good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good yeah, afternoon. I'm soon. Got to go home, order some sloppy pizza. That sounds actually like a great afternoon. That's the way to do it. A sloppy pizza? Are you going with like cheese or pepperoni? Oh, you know what? Like I, I never, I, I always choose one of those. It's always cheese or pepperoni, but I have, I have the same amount of love for both. Uh, same. You know what? When you, when you, when you visit the, the States, we'll uh, all split a massive pizza uh, when you're out on tour. Dude, I mean, that sounds like a massive feast right there. It really does. Um, today, you are coming to us from, it looks like, is this your studio, your recording studio? Yeah, this is, well, this isn't my studio, but I'm just like, uh, I don't know, I'm coming in and like, what's it called? Renting? Renting it, borrowing it, just using borrowing it. You probably it, just, yeah, you probably so just I'm roll in there. You, you roll in, you're like, around. everyone clear the room, get out. That's that. Well, I did it in almost like that, but a lot nicer. And then, okay. <laughs> and then people tend to be very nice to you when you're nice, also. So just ask, just add please to everything, and then you're good. That's, that's okay. Noted down. I'm gonna write that down as well. Please for everything. Um. So I mean, obvious question: Are you working on new music in the studio? Yep. Right now, well, I'm I'm trying. It doesn't. Oh, you know, I'm just like, fuck, um, sighing already. <laughs> just like, oh, new music. Uh, I'm trying to make something, but every time, like after putting out a project or like finishing music, I'm, I'm always like, I'm never going to make music again. Like I'm never going to be able to make music again. So that's kind of like the pit I'm in right now. I'm kind of in this little rut of thinking I'm never going to be able to make music again. Is it like a writer's block type of thing? Yeah, a little bit. Just I, I just don't hear like sometimes I'll just I'll just hear an entire song in my head and and it would just come out in like two, three weeks and then I'll just have this like finished song. But it's been a while now because I've just been out traveling and I've been like moving houses and shit. So like now I just feel like my mind is just like thinking of silver silverware and just other <laughs> Oh man, I can't wait for like the next song. You like spoons and knives and forks and dinner yeah. and living room. My new record called Everything You Need in a Home. And then every song is just like bath rug or I don't know, bathtub. It's just <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. I think you're onto something. You definitely are. I mean, speaking of, you know, your debut album, congrats coming out in April. Yeah. Um, you know, how, how has it changed since the release of this album? The album for me? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think the most like obvious change to me is, is that I don't hear anything I want to change to the, like, I don't want to make any more changes on the album. Like I remember when I was like, I had, you know, handed in all the mixes and masters and everything. I, I could still hear things that like bothered me. But I feel like what has changed is that my record doesn't bother me anymore. Like, I'm just like, wow, this is a great record. And I listen to it a lot all the time still. Uh, and I hope people also do because it's like it's only been, been out for a couple of months. I don't know, six months, five months, seven months. I don't know. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, I was going to say, like, how has life changed? Because it is such a great record oh. and, and with like fans and everyone hearing it. Like, how has just your life changed since the release? Well, like, um, I mean, I've been kind of, I mean, I've been home almost for the entire time as like when the, when the, record has been out I've been mostly home and I have a very very chill low-key home life like I'm just like wearing a I don't know I, I look like a mom walking my dog all the time so like very it's very normal back here like but the main change obviously is just that I I'm continuing to make music for a living but I, it wasn't really until like I went back on the road and like people would like stop me in airports and shit and 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 like people would come up to me in the street and I and, and like stuff like that like I haven't really been out in the world up until like August and I've been traveling like constantly since August up until last week so uh yeah I feel like what's changed mostly is that people know who I am a little bit more now that and it sounds like you're buying a lot of spoons and forks and rugs yes yeah, so I'm a mom when I'm home and then like I'm a rock star on the road Take what it, a pinch of salt. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we're ready for the rock star. That's coming in 2022. We are ready to see that. What is, uh, what is, uh, is it Lola? Your, 
Luna? Yeah. Lolo, that was close though. Oh, thank you. Luna. Next dog. What does Luna think of mom's success? Oh, she hates it. She's like, she's trying to sabotage every recording, I can tell, because, you know, she doesn't want me to go back on the road. I think she wants in on it. You should try and use some of uh, her vocals if, if she yeah. makes it in there. I love that you call it vocals and not just like <laughs> barking, uh, but she never barks, really. The only time she barks is when she feels neglected. And yeah. She'll, she'll do like, if I don't like acknowledge her, she'll be standing like this, like that. Which was a very weird bar. See? Event. Luna wants in. Luna wants in on the studio time with mom. She does, for sure. So, but she's here now. She's chilling. And, um, you know, she's, she's a good dog, man. I, she, she brings great vibes into the studio. I think so. I think all our pets, you know, have that effect. So, Luna, keep doing what you're doing and help mom out. Um, and you just keep doing what you're doing. Let's talk about uh, I'll Call You Mine. I always like a good story behind a song. We're playing it on Alternative Soundcheck. What can you tell us about I'll Call You Mine? I'll Call You Mine was the first song I made in 2019 that, like, it instantly gave me a feeling of, like, wow, this is, this is my – it was the first track that I – ever made that I was like wow this should live in an album like this is an album track because um I was making it the day before I went on tour and um I was just I was singing in a very weird oh my nose is like super itchy right now hold on you're good oh, oh. <laughs> I'll do it too ah, so we both oh, have it <laughs> that was good it was good for you too but yep. yeah so I was making it the first day uh on tour and then I was just like playing it out loud in the airport with my friends. And I was like putting my phone up to everyone's ears and just like saying, listen, listen, listen to this. This is, this is next level shit. And um, yeah. So it's honestly like the, the, the beginning seed of my debut album. What was it like inspired by the story behind it? Oh, um, it was just inspired by just like a feeling of, of like, being broken down like like being torn down by other like earlier relationships and kind of not having trust issues but just kind of like being reluctant to opening up to new people mm -hmm. um and then but it's about like letting your i don't know breaking your own walls down to let other people in um that was like the main thing in my head and also just like painting the scenario of two people having a good time but then also still feeling like there's this like moment of like a feeling of anxiety that this isn't gonna last um because it, it didn't last all the other times so right yeah but it's all wrapped into this nice little pop indie song it's a great song and when you were you know sticking the phone in your friend's ears uh what was their reaction initially when you you know recorded this well, song i never get the reaction i want from my friends or because like i'll show a demo and it, it sounds very like it's not finished at all so they'll be like yeah that's cool and i'm like why are you not losing your shit like you're out of the band martin i don't want you in the band <laughs> those reactions um ah <laughs> uh, yes i love your honesty it's true yeah. i say that to all my bandmates you're out of the band but we're, the band. <laughs> we're best friends so <laughs> is there anyone left in your band at this point uh, are they all are they, luna. just uh, luna yeah She's sticking by her side. Yeah, she's, you know, it's insane what dogs can do with computers nowadays. It's like, oh, man, running all the tracks and everything. Wow. Luna, the producer getting credits. Yeah. No, her producer name is Lola, by the way. Lola is her producer name. Yeah, which was, yeah, which was what, what I said, Luna and Lola. OK, I like this. I like where we're going with this. Yeah. Will will you be bringing uh, her out on tour with you, you think? Definitely not. She cannot fit into a bus, and uh, she also, as dogs do, she smells like a dog. And buses, they tend to smell a lot, unfortunately. And I, and I, I'm already sleeping. It's very close bed. quarters already, and to have yes, but luckily I have a little room in the back now. So oh, so we have sort of upgraded now that you have your headlining tour. My headlining tour and. Uh, March and April in the United States. And then uh, I go to Europe in May. So that's like, it's like three months on the road. 
three months without Luna, three months on the road, but it's cool because I have the room in the back of the bus. And we are definitely upgrading the luxury of World in Red. Uh, I don't have to sleep in a smelly bunk with someone snoring under and over me. No, this is going to be, you got to do like a, a Cribs episode on your new, uh, your new spot, the, the new yeah. tour bus. Did you see the video of Justin Bieber like being like, hey, this is my tour bus? Uh -huh. like, it's just like this, it's like more fancy than any house I've ever been in. Like the bus is more fancy. So that's going to be you now. So you got it. You got to. Oh, no, it. that's like, I'll, I'll do like a, like a light edition of that. Like <laughs> <extra> light. <laughs> okay. I like that. We'll look for it while you're out on tour. You know, what, are you excited to be on the road? I mean, what are you, uh, what are you looking forward to um, when it comes to, you know, the show and, and seeing your fans? Um, like I've been kind of nervous about the entire like touring part again because like I it really fucking messed me up in 2019. But what I'm actually really excited about now is to have it a little bit more comfortable on tour and also kind of get into that like tour grind, which sounds hilarious. And I saying grind in any sentence uh, is just weird. But like kind of getting into the rhythm of being on tour. So like waking up, doing sound check, and then just like you know, maybe go for a run and then play the show and kind of, I don't know, I, I'm just excited to, to deliver a really good show and I'm excited to play new songs and I'm excited to, uh, you know, upgrade the production of the uh, tour and just like the actual shows because I don't want to just play a similar show. We're like planning everything now, but like I don't want to play the show I could have played two years ago or three years ago, you know what I mean? So right. I want to do some weird shit. And I'm excited for that. We're excited for it as well. I mean, do you ex also expect a lot of new music um, to kind of surprise your fans with? Is that what you're working on right now in the studio? Uh, well, mostly like my fans haven't really been able to even hear the album yet. So kind of there will be a lot of new album music that people will be able to hear. Um, I don't know about this, though. Like, uh, I mean, it's still like two, like it's like three months until I leave. So I'll probably have something new by then. Fingers crossed. Uh, I know I'm going to take a, like a long hiatus in January and February to be like, fuck off everyone. I need to focus on the music. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm grinding in the studio. Leave me alone. I'm on the studio grind. It's the Let studio me... grind, man. Luna, get my coffee. Studio oh, grind time. <laughs> like have like, you know, like Mike will made it. It'll, it'll be Luna producer. Yeah. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Yeah. I like that idea. Is there a uh, is there a song you're really looking forward to performing? Um, you know, out on out on the road. Uh, I'm really excited to perform my song "Horny Lovesick Mess," which is from the album, and it's um, I pr I've performed it once. I did it like last week in Paris. I did this super low key underplayed show, and we weren't gonna play it because we had a like a sub bass guy um, who was like subbing for my own bass player. Um, so he didn't know the song, but then I played it like just with me and the piano and it was just like a really nice moment. So I'm really excited to play that song with my bass player uh, on tour and just like more of the, like I'm excited to play more songs of the record and, and feel like I'm good at playing them because um, like it takes time to like really learn your, your set. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm excited to just like practice a lot and just get fucking, you know, ready for this shit. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of, it's going to get here quick. So, I mean, the holidays are pretty much here. Is it going to like, you're going to hang with family and then it, you just like hit rehearsals and then it's like boom tour. Yeah. I'm, that's pretty much my plan. Uh, I'm, I'm going to Florida uh, on December 1st. Uh, and then I'm going to be in the United States for like 10 days. And then I might have to do a little bit of other Europe traveling before Christmas, but um but I'm definitely going to be home for Christmas and just like chilling with my family. Uh, I haven't seen my siblings in like, I don't know, since summer. So they, I know that they miss me and they want to hang out. So going to do that, you know, got to nurture the family relationships too. You do. You got to take care of it. Are you like a big time holiday person? Are you going to get like all decked I out? Love, I love the holidays, but like, like I loved it last year. Cause I have this new thing now that I love giving presents to people that I want to give presents to. So like if I, which sounds stupid, but um, 
I don't know. Sometimes you just don't, you don't know what to give to someone. And like, right. if I don't know what to give to someone, then I'll be like, I'm not giving you anything because I don't know what to give you. But so that's like a thing I have now that I'm only gifting people something when I have something I want to gift them. So if I don't get any ideas to what I'm going to give my mom this year, then she's not getting anything. And that's also good for the environment. And then the gifts are automatically more sentimental and more personal when you start giving gifts like that. Yeah, I think so. That's why I'm excited for hol- the holidays. Or you could, you could also just take, you know, get your CD and just put it in like everyone's as a stocking stuffer. And be like, here guys. Yeah. I'll be like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just order a bunch of merch for my side. Like, <laughs> Here's a new beanie. Make, I got you. There's a hoodie. Like a stock girl in red Christmas card. It's been a great year for girl in red. I'm <laughs> have you around me. Uh, blah, blah, blah. That would actually be really funny. I like that idea. Please make that happen. Um, you know, when you do get back onto the road, do you, uh, is there like, you know, places or foods that you look forward to, you know, being on the road in the States or just around the world? Like, Fun fact about touring, at least in my case, is that I often, you, I eat a lot of shit. And well, I think a lot of artists end up eating a lot of shit, which sucks because there are so many great restaurants. But like when you're in like in the middle of, I don't know, Salt Lake City and you don't know the city and you're kind of like, I don't know what, where to go. You kind of just like Uber eat some wacko weird ass burger. Right. And that that's it. So I wish I had, I wish I, I wish I like, I mean, I've never been to Hooters, so, you know, maybe I could go there. Um, good chicken wings. At Hooters? Really? Yeah, they got, like, really good wings. I am. Okay, I love chicken wings. So, I maybe okay, that's a place. I, I'm excited to get the Hooters chicken wings. Okay, all right. Done, done and done. <laughs> now for now the re- role reversal, if we visit Norway, oh, first okay. off, what is something we just need to do? Uh, if we've never been and then what is the food we need to try okay so you have to go hiking anywhere so probably outside of oslo go go to some like beautiful place in norway Lofoten, i don't know Jotunheim, and some like some some mountain that is beautiful and then just like suck up all that nature energy and anything you if you want to put something in your mouth that isn't food because the best recommendation the the best thing I can recommend is the coffee in Norway is insanely good. It's like, it's like 10 times better. Some niche as Brooklyn coffee you're going to get. It's like, it's even, it's better. And I'm turning into a coffee nerd, but great coffee is really good. I just had some flown in from Norway oh, right here. <laughs> there you go. With your, with your stormtrooper cup. With my stormtrooper ready to go. Dude, oh, yeah, okay. I love Star Good. Wars. I love Star the Wars. The first as well. thing I did in, in the pandemic was was buying all the the prequels and like the I don't know four five six. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just binged it all. I'm that. I also have um, the robe. I have a lightsaber. I have, I have a couple lightsabers. Can admit. Dude. You know. I mean, that's pretty cool. I cool. did have a lightsaber, uh, but I gave it to my little brother because he's he's he, I don't know he's obsessed with star wars and he he likes the 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 stuff and toys i had so i was like you know what humble girl in red sister is giving this to you you really are a good good sister hooking them up with that star wars life boy well marie uh we appreciate you taking the time today i know you're super busy in the studio um we look forward to seeing you out on the road in 2022 when you take over the world world domination That's as you're headed, man. as you're grinding in your that studio life and your brand new uh world domination grind. yes yes um and we look forward to you know just seeing all, all your music just come to life uh it's been a, it's been a, a long time uh you know everyone being at home so it's going to be exciting to see you out there on the road Thanks, man. Thanks for taking the time out of your day, too, to talk to me. And uh, I hope you have a good time. Hopefully you'll catch a show in 2022. And, you know, hopefully I'll see you in the mosh pit. Dude, I, I will be there. Yeah, ready to go with my bring, coffee, yeah. of course, with my coffee. Yeah, I'd like, bring the lightsaber, too. And my lightsaber. You'll see me glowing in there. You're like, can you please get that guy out of here? Yeah. Dude, dress code is glow sticks, and you go all the way with the lightsabers. So that's pretty cool. Done. I will go hard. All right, girl in red. We appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, we'll see you out on your world tour. Thanks for talking to Alternative Soundcheck. Thanks, man. Bye. Later.